Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're going to be continuing on from where we left off in the last one uh, but I just wanted to round that video off so that we could look at how we could actually save the Excel file and also make sure that we close down our Chrome browser. So if you haven't seen the previous video, uh, put the link to that on the screen now. Um, else, if you have already watched it, then we'll just carry on from exactly where we left off. So you may remember that we'd got all of these steps that we see on the screen here, where we had opened up Chrome, we had navigated through Amazon, and we'd exported a list of all the Excel books that met our criteria. So what we're gonna do is follow on from that and just finish this off to make it all nice, neat and tidy. So one thing that we could do on here that we didn't look in our previous video is the ability to add comments. So if you just search for comment, uh, we can see the option of flow control and comment. So if you just click and drag that in there, it literally just gives you the ability to add some comments to your flow. So in this one, we'll put, um, let's do uh, close and save. And then when we hit a save, you can see obviously it's now going to show that here. Obviously you could add more of these comments further up here to, to separate the different elements of initializing and opening Chrome, doing your navigation, and then obviously the output. Uh, but obviously you can drag and drop these wherever you suit, but for us we'll literally just leave it in there, uh, just an example of what you can do. So the next thing you're then going to want to be able to do on here is, obviously we've got this Excel file here which has got all of our data from Amazon, but we want to now save that file. But because this flow could work, or it will run at least daily, but it might run multiple times per day, I want to extract the current date and time so that I can incorporate that into the file name. So in order to do that, I'm gonna simply type uh, current date, if it works. And then once it's loaded, you can see we've got a date time option and we've got this get current date time. So all we're gonna do is drag that down there, below our comment, uh, current date and time. And at the moment, I'm happy for it to be system time zone. So the time zone of my current system. Obviously you can define a particular uh, time zone if you require. So if you were to go into that, you could obviously select from anything that you require. So we've got Europe, the rest is obviously defaulted here at the moment, but you could choose any other option that was desirable to you. Uh, I could just see if I can quickly go and change this to do Europe, uh, London. So yeah, that's gonna be most applicable to me. And it's gonna give me obviously the current date and time for this country and region. So if we go save, and as you're probably familiar before, it's gonna store this into a variable current date time. So having got that information, we want to now format this slightly differently. So at the moment, it's gonna give us the date, space, and then our time, whereas I want to do this into like a single string, uh, so it's easier to store into a file name. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go into, what well, I'm gonna do a search for date, because I can't remember what the exact one is. And we should have the option available to us of convert date time to text. You can obviously go the other way around, but for our purposes, we're gonna simply use the convert date time to text. We'll drag that into here. So date time to convert, all we need to do is go into our variables and select the previous one we're done. So this date time here, select. Format to use, well, we want to use a custom, custom format. And what I'm gonna do is do the year. And you can see as I type this, it's gonna obviously give you a demonstration or uh, give you a sample output below. Year. Want them followed by the month, followed by the day, an underscore, and then the hour and minute as well. So you can see it's gonna build out this, the year, month, day, underscore, followed by the current time. This way, if we've got multiple runs per day, obviously they've got the individual timestamp to make sure that nothing is getting overwritten. And once we're on this, we're happy with how that's looking. Let's just do save. So now we've got our, the key piece of information that we need. All we now need to do is to close and save our Excel file. So we'll close this search option here and we'll navigate down to our Excel section and we're gonna to go to close Excel. So you also do have the ability to just do save Excel, but for us, we'll do use, you will use close Excel because we want to also, not only do we want to close, but we also want to save the document at the same time. So we've only got one instance of Excel running and we can see it's stored in this variable Excel instance. But for closing Excel, do not save is the default. We just want to change that to save document as, and it's gonna ask us to give the file extension and our document path. So in here, I'm gonna simply go to CSV. And then when it comes to document path, it wants you to provide the actual file path. So if you go into the icon there, 
I'm going to navigate to my desired folder, which is this Power Automate folder. And what I want to call this is Amazon Excel and followed by an underscore. So this is going to be the file name, but we're, we're not quite finished yet. But once I hit OK, what would happen by default if I did nothing more is every time this uh, flow runs, it would save uh, the file name Amazon Excel underscore obviously as a CSV. But I want to now utilize this variable we did previously. So all I'm going to do is at the end here, go into my variables and select my formatted date time, hit select, and you can see it's now built upon our file path. So it's now going to save a file name with the Amazon Excel underscore and then whatever the current uh, time and date uh, is captured in our variable per that flow. So we'll simply go save now. And then the last but not least thing we need to do is to simply close our web browser because we've also got that open still from here. So all we'll go do is go into, uh, I think we should have a section here called browser automation and look, close web browser right down the bottom. So we'll just drag that one in there as well. And simply again, only one browser um, instance open. So it's gonna open or close this browser icon here. Click save. And then that is now the extent of all the information we need. So what I'm gonna do is just close this screen down ever so slightly to try and get everything on one page. Make that a bit bigger. We can obviously close the variables. We don't need to see that information. And then all I'm gonna do is open up our destination file path or folder path, shall I say. Let's make that a bit bigger, like so. So what will happen now is when I run this, hopefully it will pop up on the screen, the opening of the browser and navigation. We might see Excel briefly before it closes, but more importantly, we should see the output of our desired file name in our desired folder over the right-hand side. So let's click Run. Okay, there's the browser opening now, and you should see it will go down and navigate through our search term Excel and search for that. And then briefly, you might see Excel pop up with the outputted data. Yep. That file is then going to close, and then we can see over the right hand side here, we've now got Amazon Excel uh, with the current date and also the time at which that file was run. If we obviously to now run this feature, this would continue to um, add files here with the applicable um, date and timestamp stamp, date and timestamp uh, for that file when it was run. So I hope you enjoyed that video and it helped just to sort of tie off where we left from uh, left off from in our previous video. If you do have any questions about the content of the video, please do drop a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you did enjoy that video, please don't forget to hit the like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but does help that all important YouTube algorithm. And if it's the first time seeing one of our videos or you've watched them before and you've still yet to subscribe, please do hit that subscribe button now and also the bell notification button. That way you'll be notified of all of our videos when they come out in the future. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next video.